Al Hooper is taking strike. A gentle long hop. Pulled away for four runs. Rather a meek start by England, I must say. Let's take one more look at that. Always uh, defeats me why players spend so much time out there getting loose and suddenly drop a, a long hop halfway down the pitch. That field has uh, been tested really for the first time. And the ball goes across it at great pace. Yeah, it's just a touch of width and a little bit of shortage of length. He's got in. Angus Fraser has the first wicket. Sherwin Campbell, not his best shot, that one. Failed to get his feet across. The bat was a long, long way away from the body. And West Indies have lost their first wicket on 21. Yes, he pitched the ball up here. The foot didn't go far enough across. This foot across a little bit, but he was a long way from the line. A very fine edge. Pitching the ball up that did it, and I'm sure that's the way for England to take wickets. Shot. <laughs> Great shot. Yeah, that's pure instinct, natural flair, and four runs. That's high in the air. And well caught. Very well caught indeed, John Crawley. Those are not easy chances to take, going back, looking over his shoulder in a bright blue sky. And it was a difficult chance, well held. One has to wonder about Carl Hooper's uh, maybe mental attitude, because certainly he's seen Sherman Campbell give himself away, literally, wide outside of the off-stump. That ball was a long hop, and he tried to hit it over mid-wicket. There was only one way that ball could go, and that's up. Probably to find leg, but this one did end up at mid wicket. One has to wonder, but if the West Indian batsmen really recognize that they've got a, a golden chance here on this pit. Well, this is the act I rather fancied, and I'm very pleased that John Embry's had an early bowl. It's in the air. Now, that was a great stroke. He was actually thoroughly beaten in the flight, and he improvised with a, a lovely flick of the wrist way over extra cover. He did right, Richie. He was beaten there. He was going for the forward defensive. It was wide on him, and he wasn't going to get there, and he just went through with it. Well bowled. That's very well bowled by Fraser. He started Adams at around about midland leg, I reckon, and uh, then left him off the seam. That's a good performance from England. They started off bowling in very, very ordinary fashion. And now they've picked up three wickets, the last of them here. Jimmy Adams with that shuffle straight across the crease. And Nick Knight has uh, struck a blow in his first test match. Catch on debut. Jimmy Adams caught Knight by Fraser for 24. Very good stroke. Angus Pisa is a little ambitious calling a bouncer at Lara. But dealt with, with a certain amount of disdain. Got him. Another one for Fraser, right on the stroke of lunch. It's turned into a great spell for Angus Fraser. Richie Richardson goes. Caught two, caught four, Paul Fraser. A slip catch is go. It won't be the most difficult one Thorpe has ever taken, but it could be one of the most important. It was rather a nasty one going away to his right-hand side and low down. Well, I thought it was a poor shot. He didn't really play at it. He was going to draw the bat away. Got caught in two minds. The line, the length was good by Angus Fraser. Excellent performance this morning for England. In England on all the aces at the moment. 
Beautifully played. That's 50 for Brian Lara. And what a lovely way to reach the mark. Very strong on the offside. Just a beautiful timer of the ball. 53 not out. And again, in good time. Just 67 balls faced. Straight out. Travel pretty quickly. Certainly hit firmly by Keith Atherton, but straight into the midriff of Dominic Court. Full toss, and that's hammered away. So never underestimate Keith Arthurton, he may look to be struggling, but you can't bowl bad balls and that really was a full toss. Well, look how easily that goes. Third man need not have chased at all. concentration oh dropped it it was a stretch and a half dive but it was catchable height well he's hammered it away Very strange signal from the umpire there. I presume that he was signaling four, but if you come from the Transvaal, it could have been something entirely different. Beautiful stretch. And all this is uh, the fight back after the loss of a wicket, the breaking of the partnership. Shuffling across the crease, and it was a splendid innings. A lovely shot. Quite a number of uh, boundaries there, 16 fours, and uh, most English sporters will be delighted to see him go, but with a tinge of regret, they probably enjoyed his batting. A great talent. Lofted. There is a man, John Embry, out at uh, deep mid wicket underneath it and takes it safely. Colin Croft talking only moments ago about the way the West Indies batsmen have got themselves out all through the day. You can add Junior Murray to that list. The man was set there waiting for just that sort of indiscretion. And you don't get much more obliging than this. Yes, a total lack of discipline, I think, by Junior Murray. The man was set there. The trap was set, was set for a very long time. Embury has actually been camping there at midwicket. There's no shortage of activity uh, out on the field with the players and with the umpires in the opening day of this Old Trafford Test match. Harold Bird and uh, Cyril Mitchley had to find some way to cover the greenhouses outside the ground. The sun was shining on them. The players um, were inconvenienced there and it eventually had to be covered up with black netting and eight minutes were lost. 
three slips in a gully for Dominic Cork against the right hand of Bishop. Got him. Eight down. Good reflex action. Cork has had Bishop flailing away outside off stump. Hundred test match dismissals now for Jack Russell. Came from the slip man. The knockdown by Knight. Russell came between them, and it was pretty well done because uh, he had people on either side of him there. Still got through. Bishop caught Russell Bowl Cork nine, and 185 for eight. Well. I think you call that an orthodox shot, but it's brought in four runs. He just stood on the back foot there and smashed it through the covers. It brings up the 200 for West Indies. There he goes. It was a pretty good slower delivery. I don't know that it was Cork's really slow ball, but... Uh, it certainly had Kenny Benjamin playing quite dramatically early at it. And Cork has claimed another wicket. England have claimed their ninth in the innings, 205 for nine. Well taken. That's it. End of the innings at 216. We're into the 61st over, and Angus Fraser, like Dominic Cork, has claimed four wickets. Four to each of them, and two to Mike Watkinson. So, with the West Indies all out for 216, there was still enough time left on day one for England debutant Nick Knight to open up with Mike Atherton. Very well played. And plays that so well off the back foot. He gets on tiptoe and with a straight back plays the ball square or behind square on the offside using the speed of the ball. Inside your box. There are more and more problems for uh, umpire Harold Bird and Cyril Mitchley for that case, but uh, it always seems the weight of the world is on uh, umpire Dickie Bird and his shoulders. What's happening there is that the sun is shining on the glass of a hospitality box. It was all too much for everyone, and another six minutes were lost. It's going to be a boot, and the boot isn't good enough. Kirtley Ambrose just straying a little bit in line down that leg side. Full toss outside off stump, and he's dragged it back on. Looked to me as though he lost it. And that's the ball uh, Walsh seems to have been trying in recent times. The quite high full toss. And it's been noticeable that batsmen in the opposition teams either completely fail to pick it up or only get it at the last fraction of a second. Well, I don't often say that batsmen are unlucky because I think you make your own look at this game, but I think we can say here this is a high full toss. He loses it, doesn't really see it. He's sort of half plays, not sure quite where it is. And that inside edge from a ball way, way outside off stump goes onto the stumps. John Crawley is the new batsman, 45 for one now. Shot. So it's gone across the outfield at a rate of knots. That's a nice reply from uh, number three, John Crawley. And no doubt about that. I don't know whether Crawley saw that or not, but he padded up to something that hit from uh, where I'm sitting, round about middle and off. Perhaps it was only off, but Crawley has gone. Bowled by Walsh for eight. The slow ball followed by the very quick one. 
eight from 26 balls and 65 for two at the end of the first day in reply to the West Indies 216. An entertaining first day comes to an end with England losing a couple of wickets in the fading light. On day two, the question was, could anyone stay in long enough to build a lead? Atherton set the pace early. That's a good start. Flicked away, chase for Ian Bishop. Leaving Courtney Walsh to remind him exactly who he was up against. It's got him, in one sense. This resulted in a warning. I think a feeling here from Dickie Bird that there's been a lot of short pitch bowling this morning. Nicely timed. Three to Everton and 100 up for England. Square the wicket very well. Not just uh, on the offside, but also plays good full shots. surge of applause as Afton breaks the chains and plays a really free pull shot through mid-wicket. Yes, and I think the fact that he's able to pull Ambrose so convincingly just shows that Ambrose hasn't got the ball coming out of his hand uh, properly. It's gone. A big appeal. The finger goes up and Atherton goes. The easy pull shot is followed by quite a venomous delivery. Flips the glove, I think. Terrific fighting innings, a great example by the England captain. Now, did that hit the glove? Might it have flicked the shirt? He wasn't all that happy. I think it was a really good ball, that. It whistled through to uh, the keeper. The one before didn't come out of his hand very well. He was able to be pulled, but that one was the Ambrose of old. Oh, well played. <laughs> and these great cheers have erupted around Old Trafford every time an England batsman breaks out of this watchful defensive mood. Beautifully flipped away. That'll be four. Even though it took a bit of a hiccup on the uh, the covers that mark the cover that uh, cover the cover, as it were. There's uh, an artificial cover that goes over the square at uh, mid wicket there. too quickly and the 150 comes up for England 153 now for three that's well swept guided deliberately fine it was a full toss anyway but uh, it's nicely put away by Robin Smith partnership between Thorpe and Smith what a lovely way to bring it up Stumps. That's a good knock from Graham Thorpe. 52 from 85 balls. That is a very good strike rate. Well, it doesn't matter where he was standing with that. That's a cracking 
shot. Really good tip to the covers. Well, that's 200 up. There's a wonderfully threatening run from Arthur in the cover because he's left-handed. But then again, Falk is one of the quickest. Oh, that's vicious. That was very, very quick. And right on target. That will be as close as Robin Smith has ever sniffed a cricket ball. That's Paul in front of square. Jimmy Adams racing round will cut it off. England have the first innings lead. 217 for three. Those wickets in hand, very, very valuable. And this has been, and still is, a very fine partnership between Graham Thorpe and Robin Smith. Catch! What a catch! Kirtley Ambrose has struck. He's taken the wicket of Robin Smith, once again cramping the batsman. It may have flown off uh, the glove rather than the bat, but certainly it flew into the right hand of the sub-fielder who's on there for Carl Hooper. Stuart Williams, it looked like to me. And Robin Smith has gone for 44. A courageous, gritty 44 and a splendid partnership between Smith and Graham Thorpe. Oh. Wonderful stroke. Seen them play a few of those today. Also square the wicket shots. One or two pulls. Smashing, cracking one past square leg and then that glorious cover drive. can put England in a great position by this evening. Wonderful. Just brilliant to watch. 4-4-4. Four, four, four. And well, I suppose just the hint of a smile there, but it doesn't do you much good to smile against a pace bombing attack like this. Classic stuff. this of Craig White's very important for him to stay there get what he can mind you but stay there with Graham Thorpe now it's over 250 for England 253 for four well they've gone up there's a big shout and Graham Thorpe is walking and finally Dickie Bird's finger goes up to confirm the fact that Graham Thorpe is out six short of the hundred Ian Bishop gets reward for some very hard work this afternoon. And Graham Thorpe's innings are very, very fine innings indeed. Full of great shots, resolute defence, good selection. Finally comes to an end. Drawn into the shots by Ian Bishop as he pushed the ball across the left-hander. And a very straightforward catch to Junior Murray. So, Jack Russell, the new man in to replace Graham Thorpe. Left-hander replaces left-hander. Start of a very concentrated spell here by Ian Bishop. I think even from a shorter run now. Uh, 
and dispatched the way it should be. That was nothing but a long hop. Well, I don't know what you were going to say, Colin, about the shorter run. But it was not a good ball. A big shout there. And he's out. Well, that might have been the bottom edge. It was a quicker ball, and that's exactly the skill which Kenny Benjamin has. And Craig White should recognize them because they're his skills as well. Maybe the toe end, he's examining the toe end, but that's a great disappointment for Craig White and a huge disappointment for England. Beautifully played. 300 up now for England against West Indies, 216. Uh, that 150 lead will still be very much in their sights. Good shots. Right in the slot for Mike Watkinson and firmly dealt with. That's the best response. And the England leads as a result of this very firmly hit extra cover drive now over the 100 mark exactly 102 full toss one bounce and into the fence well, this kind of shot here was suggested that Mike Watkinson does not have a problem seeing the ball. That was a full toss and dispatched as it should have been over mid wicket for four. That's well stopped. There's confusion now. There's a chance to run out. And Dickie Bird throws it open to the third umpire. There was just that element of confusion in the calling. It was firmly struck and well fielded, well intercepted. The finger is up. Jack Russell is on his way back. Graham Thorpe proved to be the hero of day two, falling agonisingly short of his century in a spirited innings for England. The next morning, West Indies' pace attack had to stop England's tail from wagging. But it was a controversial start to the day. Good running. That's a nice start and a good confidence boost to see the 350 come up with an all run four. Now, this is the four struck by Dominic Cork through the covers off the back foot off Courtney Walsh last over. That is what happens. Everyone was following the flight of the ball, including your commentator, and his back foot has gone back onto the stumps now he pushes off to take the first of the four runs they ran as he did so and his foot touched the stumps the bail fell off and by Mitchley would have known precisely what happened but he couldn't do anything about it because no one appealed I don't think that's going to cool any tempers out there either a good shot. It's gone very fine. No chance of uh, Walsh getting around to that. Yes, it's all going England's way. And very quickly, too. This is a thickest edge. He's trying to run it a little bit, but not quite that fine. Look. Oh, he's taken it. The rebound taken at first slip. Junior Murray at least got something on it just to knock it up. And uh, Stuart Williams, the substitute fielder, actually had a, a pretty simple job to do. 
Well, it's good innings by uh, Mike Watkinson. Played well, his first test match. He's got a terrific ovation by his home crowd. Fine shot. Straight down the ground. Kirtley Ambrose is never going to catch it. And England cruise past the 400 mark. around the ground is for the 200 lead coming up got him that's onto the stumps John Embry is gone the back for defensive not solid enough ran down onto the stumps off the bat and probably something else as well and so John Embry is gone for eight but it's been a handy knock Dominic Cork has been in such good form at the other end that the partnership is another handy effort for England well launched away that's over the top of Jimmy Adams at uh, deep point Splits the two men on the boundary. Four more runs to Dominic Cork. There it is, 50 for Dominic Cork. His maiden test match 50. Now he's well entitled to celebrate. All his England colleagues on the balcony there applauding his efforts. And he's played wonderfully well this morning. He's run brilliantly between the, the wickets. He's cracked the ball of the boundary seven times in that innings of 50. He's taken him just 73 balls and one minute short of two hours. A very important innings for him, a very worthy innings for England. straight into the hands of Jimmy Adams at short leg Courtney Walsh has his final reward for this innings and England are all out for 437 Angus Fraser the man out caught by Jimmy Adams off Courtney Walsh for four and uh, another painful blow for Angus Fraser on that left hand that brought England's first innings to a close with a lead of 221 runs on a pitch that was deteriorating could their bowling attack take advantage? Shot. That's the sort of shot he's looking for. Anything pitched up. That's a fine shot from Keith Arthurton. Got right on top of it. Hit it very powerfully. <laughs> what a disaster. What a disaster. They were going so well, this makeshift opening pair. And Arthurton has got record halfway down the pitch and then halfway back again and that is a cruel blow for the West Indies Campbell's not even watching Arthurton he's only watching the field oh he's got three parts of the way down I don't believe it. now the throw's not great and Arthurton did everything he possibly could to get back but what a schmozzle Brian Lara comes out now to join Sherwin Campbell well, I mark uh, this down as good indication of uh, Michael Atherton's increased maturity as a captain. 
Embry's bowling well, but because of what Cork's done to Lara, he's got him on very quickly. And almost successfully. Well, everybody went up for this. Immediately, there was no hesitation. And probably just two, fields, two people out there who would not have thought that was out, and that's the umpire and the batsman. Four for that. No man down at uh, third man. West Indies will take what they can as regards runs. There's no need uh, for them just to concentrate on defence. If they can wipe off that deficit, then uh, they've got a chance of saving the game. Fielder might uh, just have got his fingertips to that. But uh, Lara played it beautifully into the ground. Well, you wouldn't call that grafting, but it's a perfect shot to the ball, which is short, stood up. And that's the 50 partnership. Ah! Oh, that's a big shout, a very confident shout. He's gone, he doesn't like it, the batsman walks away. It may be disappointment. A fiddling little shot outside the off stump of Watkinson and Sherwin Campbell goes to 44, 93 for two. Well, it was a nothingness shot, really. It's wide of off stump, and he's just trying to sort of run it on the offside. See, the face opens, he's trying to run it behind square. Everybody went up, and I reckon that was out. It's in the air, he's caught and bowled. Beautifully flighted off break. Mike Watkinson absolutely bowled for that. Jimmy Adams just got a little turn brown in it, looking towards the onside, maybe. Bottom ball Watkinson for one, 97 for three. Glorious stroke. There's no indication that there's any pressure at all on Brian Lara or the West Indians. A wonderful shot. Quite brilliant playing against the spin beautiful footwork took him down right to the pitch of the ball never the slightest semblance of lofting it and uh, great positioning that's going to race away fine four runs those four runs bringing Brian Mara the 50 mark 52 not out it was a magnificent half century from brian lara who looked set to build a big score on day four but what happened the next morning took everyone by surprise we're going to join play now in this fourth morning with the first over dominic cork is the bowler already a single has been taken from the over and he's bowled a no ball he's coming in now to bowl the fourth ball of the over richie richardson is taking strike and we're about to see one of the most sensational starts to a day in the past 40 years of English cricket. Oh, that's the first wicket of the day. Dominic Cork has the knack of making things happen. Richard Richardson, the West Indies captain, dragging that ball on from outside the off stump. The bales are off. This time there's absolutely no doubt in the first over of the day, why those bales have been removed. West Indies, 161 for four, and their captain on his way back to the pavilion in the first over of the day. Next man in is Junior Murray. 
Big appeal. And he's got him. Two wickets in two balls. Junior Murray did nothing more than just shuffle his front foot across in front of the stumps. And Dominic Court was right on target. This is going to be a real slow walk back for Junior Murray. LBW to Dominic Court without scoring. England really are having a dream start to the day. Just the sort of decision that all umpires really crave. Very little doubt about it. Junior Murray has hardly moved at all. Carl Hooper restricted by that injury to his right hand. In at number seven. And I don't suppose he's feeling entirely confident about the task ahead of him this morning. England just ringing the changes in this field, bearing in mind that Dominic Cork is on a hat trick. Short leg is in, silly point is in. Three slips and the gully. Well, it's another good shout. He's done it. Dominic Cork has a hat trick. Carl Hooper has gone. LBW first ball. What an effect this man, Dominic Cork, is having on this game of cricket. Two mornings in succession now. Dominic Cork has been right at the centre of the action. And Carl Hooper made almost exactly the same mistake as Junior Murray. Three wickets in three balls. The 22nd hat-trick in Test Match cricket. The last man to do it, Shane Warne, in the Melbourne Test Match last winter in Australia. Oh, wonderful shot. <laughs> it's a bit of a leveller there, going to Brian Lara. <laughs> Terrific atmosphere here at Old Trafford. Well, did that roll right back on the stumps by word. One day the bail drops off, next day it doesn't. Catch it! Catch it, they say, and that's out. Back pad, fourth short square leg, well bowled, Watkinson. Well, what an action packed morning this is. Yes, he's got a good defensive technique, but uh, you can't keep on de defending forever. The ball's spinning, look, there's plenty there for the spinners. It's very, very dry. 191 to 7. Oh, lovely shot. Beautifully placed. about Brian Lara is that uh, you give him any ball off length or off line and he has such a full range of shots that he he can pierce the field at will thank you again it's difficult it's, that's why he's in the great class to know where to bowl at him picks the length up so quickly Beautifully swept, very fine. And here's 100. First century of the Test Series. A wonderful performance. 87 in the first innings, and a century in the second. He's a gifted young player. And there'll be many in the dressing room on the West Indies side who will still think they have a chance while he's at the crease. It's a cracking shot. In that a bit, Kenny Benjamin. 
And we've seen him make runs before. He's got no great average in Test match cricket. But he knows what he's doing out there. Caught. Good catch. That was very awkwardly positioned as it came through to Knight. And he took it beautifully. That was an outstanding catch. One moment he was having his hands pointing in one direction and changed them. Almost looked as though the ball was uh, past him. Well, there's a good shot for four. Four men on the offside uh, trying to save the boundary and stop the twos as well. That's a beautiful shot. Beautiful stroke for four. Well, it was absolutely gorgeous, was this. It's just late cut, the medium facer. So fine. Get two there. Or four. Gee, that was well placed. Just picked it out. That's a good catch once again. Two splendid catches today. First one he took was a slip to get rid of Benjamin, and that one was an absolute cracker. Low and fast. It was a beautiful stroke. Just hit a little bit too much in the air. And that's a wonderful innings. serious well where did this come from he looks at times as if he can't bat he plays and misses he dances around he's a bit of a pantomime and then suddenly out comes a long handle and it's a super blow well that's another night. mighty blow and it's four hours all over all over and that man Dominic Cork is in the action yet again uh, it was brave and flamboyant stuff from Courtney Walsh but it all had to end bowled by Cork for 16 despite that formidable innings by Brian Lara England needed just 94 runs to wrap up this test match and had plenty of time to do it Simple, right? That's not all, and very good. I'm not sure I've seen Mike Atherton play any sort of full shot this early in the Test match innings before. But he's obviously come out uh, ready to make his intentions known. solid defense and then he's put it away when he came along yeah they'll need um, some adjudication there for one instant, uh, Atherton looked as though he was going to be OK, and then suddenly he was struggling. The ball skidded. It was very well taken by uh, Junior Murray, having been well picked up and thrown by Kenny Benjamin. Thirty-nine for one.
Nicely taken. Nick Knight has gone. Shander Paul, the fielder at second slip. Obviously a very good fill-in man he is. And it was an orthodox outside edge. Nick Knight just playing a little bit away from the body. That's out as well. Shander Paul, the man who's uh, claimed the catch. John Crawley, though, is waiting exactly where he was in the crease. Question is then, has that ball carried to Chander Paul? Chander Paul, obviously convinced by his reaction, the West Indies fielders uh, backing him up, that's for sure. John Crawley entitled to stand his ground if there's any doubt at all. And according to that conference between umpire Dickie Bird and Cyril Mitchley, Cyril Mitchley deciding the ball hadn't carried. Straight down his throat and got him. Kirtley Ambrose at long leg. Didn't have to go far to take that one. Graham Thorpe, as so often happens in this game of cricket, follows success with failure. So, a hiccup in uh, the midst of England's progress towards their target. Here's some interesting information given me by our, by our scorer that of 50 balls since T, only three balls have produced scoring shots. Well, where did that strike Robin Smith? It seems to be glove to head, was it? Or rather a sickening sound. Well, there is a serious question about Robin Smith, whether he's getting hit too often. There's a, a bruise appearing alongside the left eye. May well be that he goes off for a while and takes a rest. Craig White is the new batsman. escape well that ball was totally out of Craig White's control and that is it for Craig White beautiful bowling and a super catch again that surprising lift and England are now in trouble England have become Come, be calm. No runs are coming at all. Pressure's on them. More runs. And the 50 comes up. Applause of encouragement for the England batsman. Cheers for the England batsman. Kirtley do it. It's in the air. And it's a boomer. A ring-tailed boomer. crisis situation who's uh, used to crises there's your man that feels very fast anything that can beat uh, Arthurton to the boundary has to be timed well and uh, the outfield needs to be quick Russell is 25 and has now gone the winning runs 
John Crawley has struck them, turning the ball away behind square leg. And England have won this fourth test match at Old Trafford. A great win for England, but hopes that Dominic Corks 